Queen City Soccer Show. We are joined by Carolina Core FC head coach Roy Lassiter. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How you How you doing? Uh, I'm doing quite well. I'm Level Up Luke. This is my partner, Cole Godfrey. And um, with Carolina Core, y'all are out of High Point, North Carolina, playing at Truist Point. Can you tell us a little bit about the club? Well, first of all, uh, obviously, it's a new club, independent club coming into MLS Next Pro. Um, and it had some ownership groups that are very, very interested in bringing um, a new franchise, something new to the community where it opens the door for opportunities for for a, an array of, of people, including myself as a coach and staff and players and front office staff. And, you know, um, so very excited for that. Um, it's just a new opportunity and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. Hey, that's awesome. And uh, y'all are coming across our radar specifically at this point because you're getting ready for a, a preseason friendly against the Charlotte Independence as part of their fan fest on March 2nd. Um, as far as your preparation with your team, is there anything different you do with, I mean, this seems kind of like a homecoming type event. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fans present, some meet and greets with players, or is it just business as usual for you? Well, it's preparation is, is, as usual, uh, because, uh, we're in our fifth week and it, it's all about preparation for our first game of the season and into the remaining of the season. Um, I'm happy to have this opportunity with Charlotte Independence. Uh, I know Mike Jeffries there, so it was uh, easy uh, knowing him uh, to have this type of of, of competition um, in preparation for the season. Uh, so we look forward to it. Um, uh, got a lot of uh, new faces, players that have not played together before, players that not have not played. Uh, MLS Next Pro before, so it's 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 real good to have uh, that level of competition. Uh, we played other uh, other teams a, a as well in our preparation, so you know we we look forward to 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 the challenge. Yeah, for sure. Um, th uh, thanks again for joining us, Coach. Uh, my quick question for you is: uh, your head scout Andy Williams. Uh, I I'm just curious, how involved are you in the scouting process and bringing players to this team? Every last one of them, uh, <laughs> you know, so every, every last player, um, uh, I see every player that comes through, um, either my, myself or scout or through Eddie Pope, uh, if they come to me, I share it with the staff. If it comes to other staff members, they share it with the entire staff and we, we, they all take a look at it. Obviously I sign off on it, but they they I, I respect their experience, their knowledge, their playing experience, their coaching experience, their their you know their eye for talent, and so uh, you know Andy Andy Williams does what he does best, and and that's uh, you know looking for talent that can help this team develop and grow and be competitive in the season. But um, yes, I've, I've scouted not only scouted but vetted and seen their complete games, not just their highlights and their good moments, but uh, I've seen all of their moments and I probably looked at, you know, two or three other games that they have besides just their highlights. Uh, highlights are great, but I can see more in a complete game. Um, and so, you know, not even after that, I, I talk to the player, see their, just listen to them, hear them. You know, hear a little bit of if I don't know them uh, per se, then I I talk to them, uh, ask them a couple questions, um, see where their heads are, and and then I'd bring them in. Um, so it, it it it's a process. It's not just they seeing a good player and seeing the highlights and then let's go get them. It it's more than that. Yeah, for sure. So I actually have a since this is tying in here, I have a listener question from David with the Mech Reserves. And it, I think it kind of plays into exactly what you're talking about. But being a new club, where do you start when you're building a scouting network? I mean, there's so many different sources for players and so many ways of, of uh, scouting talent. W what's the starting point for that process? Um, well, I guess Andy would go out, first of all, and look at, uh, you know, com competitive teams um, where there's competition. Uh, a lot of agents also contact us. Um, and they they'll send us their players plus other players, and we all, all we all have a networking um, 
uh, system as well. I mean, we have our, our what well, we know lots of people in the league, out of the league, uh, players that are overseas. And so, you know, just, just, and then we start to put that together. Obviously we go from the spine of the team outward, um, getting that process uh, looked at and solidified first. And then we take the the outer parts of the of the team. And then we have players that are going to compete and compete for, you know, you know, uh, starting 11 minutes. Um, but I basically went out and got 20 some odd starters. So, and now the battle of training is on, it's on all the time. Um, I, I just don't have anybody in, in, in my, in my system or on my roster that I go, well, he's, we're just going to wait and just uh, develop him for the next couple of years and then see if he's going to be ready. No, we, we know that they're ready. Uh, they have to prove that they're ready every single day. And I'm looking for consistency and players that associate together the best, because obviously these players have not played together. Um, and many of them, um, some of them have, um, but several of them have not. And so now you look for understanding if they can understand each other, if they can uh, associate together, uh, understand their movements and their patterns, where they like the ball, how they want the, how they want the ball. So, all of all of those type of things, but I'm going to be the one that manages their ability to to get along uh, on the field, compete, and get along at the same time, which is which can be a hard thing as well. I bet. Yeah, and uh, just just for our listeners, uh, Coach Laster is North Carolina born and raised, Raleigh, North Carolina native, NC State player. Well, I think it was um, 1991 All ACC. Uh, I know you've been with Houston the past few years. How, is, how big of it, how big of a decision or how big of a role, I guess, was it that coming back home to your roots was such a, was a, uh, I'm trying to think how to put this. How big was that for you to come back home? Um, you just wanted to be back home or, you know, just, or starting a new project. Uh, I think starting a new project was the biggest thing, but uh, when you have uh you know, uh, a, a big name in the sport of soccer, like Eddie Pope, who, who, who at that time is now, or not right now is the, is the general manager of the team. And then at that time, just finding who fits into this system within, uh, you know, it was a, it was big on trust for me, you know, cause if I'm coming here, I'm not knowing what I'm getting into. Um, the plan was laid out. Well, um, you have people that care about the club and want to see the club grow. And it's going to, you know, sacrifice the resources they need for that club to grow and 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 be prominent in, in the community. So, it, all of those things tie in. And yes, uh, being in North Carolina, being close to my family, um, you know, I, I I wouldn't say just being so close to NC State or anything like that, but you know, because it could have been in another state. And you know, I I think people. People are the main thing that that runs the club. It's not just the club itself; it's the people. And so, when you have people that you know that are consistent in their lives, and I've known people for a very, very long time, and and so when that happens, there's a trust that is built there, and there's a confidence that's built there. And, and when I'm allowed to come in and share and illustrate my vision on what it should look like. Um, and and try to piece that together on the field to to provide a good product, then that's what it really um, is all about. And that's was my big interest. Yeah. That's great. And kind of uh, tying into that, uh, when you have the leadership like yourself and Eddie Pope, you know, Eddie is a U.S. Soccer Federation Hall of Famer. You guys both have a, a lot of U.S. national team caps what does it mean for the players and being able to set that example for them of looking back at your career and the things that you accomplished? Um, I, I'm assuming, and maybe you can tell me more about this with a younger team, uh, some of the up and coming talent that you have. Um, what does that mean as far as your experiences and setting that example for them? Well, I think it, it means a whole lot. Um, I, I think players really in this day and age, they really look at, you know, uh, the leadership that's there uh, what they've gone through, what they've done, their experience, their playing experience, their off the field experience, their coaching experience, where they've been. Um, I, I think players really look at that and and that ties a huge weight weight on what they what they'd like to do. 
uh, I don't think we had any trouble recruiting anybody. And I think we had a ton of players wanting to come into this organization, wanted to be a part of this organization. I think in, in our vetting um, scenarios, they all want to go to the next level. And that's what we want. Um, we won't don't want players that just want to want to hang out or hang around for five years. We won't. They, they, there's players here that want to go on and do bigger and better things. And so they have ambition. And, and I think our staff has ambition, but we want to learn in the process. We're all learning players, learning staff, learning. Um, it, it, so everybody is, is in that same boat there. So I, I think, um, you know, looking at these young players that have come in, it, it was not a hard decision for them to say, I want to come to Carolina core. That's awesome. And uh, the new branding, the new logo, I remember when that announcement dropped, it immediately captivated me, the Fox on there. It looks really cool. Um, I, I see you guys have a kit launch coming up soon. Any uh, preview of what the folks can expect from the, uh, the new threads? Man, well, I, I hope that, you know, first thing, first and foremost, the material needs to be good and, and that'll be good. Um, <laughs> I, I usually let the people who do that do what they do. Um, my job is the team. My job is my staff. Um, and I have a well-educated, well-knowledgeable staff in, in Andy Williams, in Amado Guevara, in Donovan Ricketts, in J.C. Martinez. Uh, you know, I, I have uh, a great staff that's with me along with Eddie. And so there, there's pretty pr there's a, a, a whole bunch of resources around myself to help me with this team and for the players to develop, because that's what this is, this is developmentally. And we want players to to move on to their next level from here. And I think once you keep it in perspective as such, um, and, and we're detailed, we all want to win, right? You, you, we're all winners. And we all played and want to win. And, and we're the same way as coaches. But we know we need to have patience in terms of the development of our players. Yeah, and I, I want to touch on something uh, that you said. You know, you y'all being an unaffiliated MLS, MLS Next Pro team, how much – do you how much was that a factor in your decision making as far as being able to have that freedom and not be beholden to a, a parent club? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, th that weighed in a big too as well because you have to remember I came from uh, MLS affiliate club, you know, Houston Dynamo. I saw the systems, uh, how things work there. I saw players coming in and out. I saw we had less numbers on this day and had more numbers on that day. Uh, we had players that we thought we were going to be able to use for the match. And all of a sudden they're pulled up to the first team yeah. or, you know, just so, so we, we had a level of inconsistency that was really tough and made us better coaches for it. And so um, I see the difficulties in that here. We always have our players. All the time, every training session, we know where they are. We know where they're going. Um, we know how long they're playing. We know who they're playing. Um, and so that's that's a really good luxury to have um, in this. But for a lot of the MLS teams, all of the MLS teams, they have that same kind type of uh, system that they have to adjust to. Uh, and it, it can be tough. It could be tough in MLS Next Pro for the MLS uh, teams. Absolutely. And just kind of touching on that, going back to your the, the end of your career in MLS, uh, you were part of the inaugural MLS season in 96 with the uh, historic Tampa Bay Mutiny franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, 27 goals set the record that stood for, what was that, over 20 years, it looks like. Um, obviously, Joseph Martinez, I mean, what are you going to do? But uh, Supporter Shields, MLS Cup, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you retire and Tell me about that journey from MLS uh, and and when you stop playing the sport uh, competitively to now taking over as a head coach. What was that journey like for you? Well, I think half of that, um, I was just thinking about me as a player and being dominant in, in that sport and being the best in my position um, and doing and just uh, working on my craft in terms of finishing and getting in positions to finish. I think that was my biggest thing. Um, I th think the latter part of my years were were starting to be more of a student of the game. Um, uh, uh, just really just watching my movement um, and how I could be better as an athlete and taking every edge that I could. Obviously, getting older, you need to take every edge that you can. 
Um, obviously watching my body more, watching uh, my nutrition, my sleep, uh, just in just my overall, you know, how I lived. Um, I wanted to, I was doing that as, as I got older. Um, and then, you know, uh, I knew probably two or three years before I retired that I wanted to be somewhere in soccer. I know I wanted to do something. I, I liked the aspect of, of coaching. I'd always question, um, without directly doing it, uh, questioning what we're doing as a, as a team, how we were moving, how we were structuring ourselves, what our formation was, why we play this type of formation, things we did in training, just all of those type of things I, I started to do on the tail end of, of, of my career. And, and then um, I hopped in with a youth uh, club in Virginia and started and got to know the DOC really well, followed him around a lot, started doing just some private stuff, um, training and, and all that stuff. And I really liked it a lot. And, and then I got my first job as a, as a director, um, after I just, right when I was retiring, um, I don't know if that was the best move or not, uh, going to be a director right away. I didn't, I probably didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, but I, I took upon that and always knew what it should look like, but I wanted more experience. I wanted to educate myself. I wanted to go out and get all the licenses I, I could possibly get. Um, I wanted to get around people that knew more than me. Um, I wanted to get around people that had more experience than me. Um, uh, I When I wasn't right, I w wanted to be corrected. I didn't want somebody to say, hey, yeah, that's great. But no, I wanted them to tell me, no, you got to do it better. Like you can do it better like this or like that or like this or like that. And so I, I I studied I studied people and I took bits and pit bits and pieces sorry from people that was going to work for me and so and I still do it today I'm still doing it and I did it as an athlete too um, I took bits and pieces that I liked from players I tried to use it how to, according to my understanding and and kept on going so I I did the same method as a as a coach and that's something I've heard from a lot of the great coaches is you know, taking uh, inspiration from those around you and stealing shamelessly when you hear a good idea. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, taking over now as the head coach and uh, going into this first season, you guys have crown legacy for your opening game on March 17th. Obviously, I mean, I got the crown on my jersey right now. So uh, I, I have season tickets. I went to just about every game last year. They had one of the most entertaining products in terms of style of play, energy level excitement and they dominated the east last year can you tell me just in terms of your scouting for the opposition what are you, you looking at for that opening game with crown legacy well first of all they couldn't have given us a more harder team to play the first game out of the game right <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I commend Crown Legacy uh, in their in their organization. There, they did very very well during the season, um, and and we will prepare and do our homework like every other team in the league does uh, in preparation for their, their matches. Um, but you know what? We're going to have a style of play of our own, and um, though we're two years behind in terms of experience uh, as the other ones, so we are playing catch up, so to speak. But I think our staff is well, well educated and experienced enough to help the develop and the knowledge of our players. I think uh, they're going to be around the same age. Uh, they're going to have we have a, a a core group of players that have played MLS, MLS Next Pro, so they already know uh, the pace of the game, the physicality of the game, um, and so so they'll already have that experience uh, coupled with other players that are coming into it that are ready for it that are up to speed and up to pace and and up to the lecture of the game so uh, we're coming to make it a game we're coming to make it a game um we're we're going to bring the game we're going to bring it to whoever we have have to play whether it's Crown Legacy or whoever but in this this instance I, I think uh, we're going to try to make it as exciting as possible and play to the very end well, hey, I think they try to make it up for you because they uh, they gave you two home games with Crown Legacy later in the season. So, <laughs> um, real quick, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll probably be more ready at that point. <laughs> uh, real quick, just in terms of uh, the format for MLS Next Pro this year, I believe they switched to a divisional structure. Um, any thoughts on that? It probably it probably helps uh, geographically, right? Um, player, you know, try the travel with. The, with the teams and, and they do that with uh, the major league soccer teams too as well 
uh, they try to keep it regionally where the where it's a little bit easier on the travel for for teams and players. So I'm glad that they they did that for MLS Next Pro as as well. So um, I, I like how they're doing it. Uh, it's 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 fine uh, with us. I, I think uh, it's just the excitement of of travel and in play, and I, I think that's. It's going to be a grind. It's a grind on that, but it's something that I went through as a as a player, and so now now as a coach, and so look, looking just looking forward to all challenges from from all rams all, all areas. Well, hey, good news. Uh, something that you have to look forward to in your first uh, season here with MLS Next Pro, you don't have to worry about leaving with a draw. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, uh, we'll, we'll 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 take the wins though. We'll take those wins. There yeah, and real quick here. Uh, Unaffiliated MLS Next Pro teams are eligible for U.S. Open Cup. Are you guys participating this year? We are. We That's sure fantastic. Are. Obviously, this whole situation with MLS, who knows? But uh, we'll certainly be pulling for, I think, all of our Carolina teams, uh, as long as they're not playing uh, somebody from Charlotte directly. <laughs> so I look forward that. to getting up for some games this season to high point. Yeah. Um, I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, I, I would kick myself, though. I studied a little bit of sports sociology in college, and uh, we're releasing an interview with Hugh Roberts from uh, Charlotte Independence today. And um, with Backyard Footy, one of his causes, they've done a lot of uh, spotlights on having black coaches, black executives, and um, representation at higher levels of organizations. With you and Eddie Pope with Carolina Corps, can you tell me about that experience and how does that um, factor in and what does that mean to you? Well, I think first and foremost, it, it means a lot, um, uh, especially when you have people in those positions that have the education for it, that have the knowledge for it and have the experience for it. Um, I, 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 I'm I glad that the door has been opened for, for those reasons. Um, I think my playing experience, Eddie's playing experience uh, are going out and got not only our, our education in school, but also our education in, in terms of coaching and our licenses as, as well. Uh, I, I think uh, that allows for these opportunities to be open. So again, and, and especially to the African, uh, African-American community, I, I want all of uh, all of our African Americans to know that they they that these doors are now open for for them to to step into, and and now it's you know going through your experience as a player and now uh, going stepping across the line and and going through and getting your education on on the game so you can better help the young players that are that are in this country. So I I, I look at it as a big as a big uh, as as a as a big global thing, right? I look at it as as helping our uh, Americans youth in, in this country and, and helping our national team and providing more talent for our national team to see. And so when you can have a lot of experienced coaches um, coaching the game, um, directing the game, managing um, uh, clubs, uh, and then, uh, you know, being African-American, uh, it, it's really good. I always thought I had to go above and beyond um the things I had to do, I can't just get the, the 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 simple license and that's it. I think I had to go get every last one of them and keep them going and and graduate from school and all that kind of stuff to to really get my opportunities right. So uh, going back to it, thankful for, for Eddie for 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 recognizing um, my talents um, and what my contribution uh, was in the sport and what my contribution can be as a head coach. That's, That's right. And just, hey, while we're talking about a shout out to my man, Darius Barnes with uh, Crown Legacy as well. I don't want to leave him out of the conversation. He's for uh, sure. That's for sure. great things in MLS. There's no way we're going to have him for long with Crown Legacy. Yeah. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, Cole, uh, any other questions here for Coach? No, I don't have any more questions, Coach. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's truly an honor. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to getting up to High Point and checking you guys out and – Gonna, I'm definitely going to be getting some merch, man, because I'll be honest with you, the, the crest is oh, yeah. next level. It is Absolutely. next level. Awesome, 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 no, guys. Look forward it. to it. Hopefully we can entertain you when you come into town. Yes, uh, sure. Absolutely. Fantastic. Coach uh, Lasser, thank you so much. And uh, where where can the folks find you guys? Find the franchise, find you on socials. Um, That's a that, – <laughs> yeah instagram twitter yeah. facebook yeah, question. yeah carolina core fc man just go on the website <laughs> type it in and you got all of it 
<laughs> I love it. Hey, thank awesome. you so much. Thank you again. You guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. <laughs>